Hello, I'm Al Gonzalez, a global Minecraft mentor and Minecraft ambassador. And thanks to Nadine Every, the Minecraft education community manager, some of us were able to volunteer to try out the new CyberSafe game called Good Game and uh, see what we think. So I imported the game and I my first impression was getting to choose the avatar, which was cool. So these are the avatars you get to choose from. And um, I, I learned right off the bat, right click, don't left click. And I chose the purple hoodied one because I love purple. And then you get started in the game. Well, already uh, it's, it's a beautiful town. So that was my first impression. Whoever built this town, wow. Uh, and the story is you are off for summer break. And you and your friends want to get into your game because your team is about to rank up. But one of your teammates, Brett, uh, didn't do so well with managing his emotions, got angry, broke his controller, and now parents say he's got to learn responsibility. So the team, his team, has this brilliant idea. Why don't we uh, make a good gaming guide, which they call good game guide, and hopefully help Brett learn some skills to manage his rage. So you go home and wow, okay, what a home. This home is gorgeous. And this kid that you're playing has parents that are very tech savvy. The dad's playing an online game with Aunt Joni so they can stay connected. And the mom's on an online uh, call with work. But the parents, Tell the kid, hey, we're going to make time to hear about your day. So already you're learning about a good balance between online life and family time. So the game uh, forces you, the player, to, well, first of all, interact with your parents, not just go right to your room and start playing. And you have to do chores. Okay. And you have to have family time uh, for dinner. So that's pretty cool. And I learned that if you try to avoid the chores, because it gives you a, a choice, um, do you take it out or ignore it? And if you ignore it, uh, it brings you back to, eh, sorry, you can't ignore me. You have to take it out. Um, so that was pretty cool. So you do your chores, take out the trash, feed the dog, and then feed your body and mind. You have to have dinner with your parents, which is really cool and they hear about your day. Great modeling of what kids should be doing anyway, and families too. Then you go up to your room, and holy moly, what a gorgeous room. That bed is huge. It's not your typical Minecraft bed. And then you're introduced to the good game guide, which leads you through what you need to do. Um, one of the other things I liked about this game, it's got a balance between the educational, the part that looks like you're doing work for school, and uh, getting to play, actually playing a game, which is what game-based learning is all about. So they introduce the player to the book in Quill, because that's where you're going to keep track of your learning by creating the good game guide, which is the whole purpose of the story. So it's not separate and just like something you have to do that's educational. It's part of the story. Uh, so well done there, building it the educational part into the story. But then, oh, and, and you start before you even get to play a game. Uh, and by the way, I do like the things it's teaching. This is what I stress in eSports. You have to have a balance. Uh, you can't just play video games 24-7 and, and get better. You, you still have to have family time, do your chores, do homework, eat healthy, and exercise. Because just gaming is not going to keep you at your best. But then they get to play a game. So watch this. Rowan, Christina, and Blockbuster. Because Brett can't play. It's a pop-up balloon game. Pretty cool. And it was kind of fun. And the thing I like... Okay, so you're part of a team. There's four people oh, on each nice. side. But if you, the player, don't pop all the balloons, you don't win. It, it doesn't end the game. So it not only forces you, 
it's actually allowing you to play. And I tried it. I, I waited around to see if my teammates would pop the balloons, and they're horrible. They don't pop uh, all the balloons. So you get to. And I got to say, I, I had a lot of fun uh, playing pop the balloons because I was able to actually play. So I enjoyed it being able to play. Um, so they introduce you to the game. Then they introduce you to some scenarios by having some players. So you remember, your fourth teammate, Brett, can't play. So you have to have other players you don't know play. And there's a few scenarios, like the first one spams the chat. So you have to report the kid for spamming the chat. And then there's another one that does this thing called griefing. He's popping your own balloons, making you almost lose. So you report that kid. And then the hacker, somebody who uh, has an unfair advantage by installing other software or mods. And uh, you have to report that too. So pretty cool. Overall, I was able to play the entire game in about half an hour. And um, I enjoyed it. And I was able to export my book. And you get a certificate, like you always do, for completing these lessons. Ooh. 